Getting vendor onboarding wrong can absolutely devastate your business. See, I just saw a recent example of this. Both Google and Facebook have paid over a hundred million dollars to fraudulent vendors. Like, how does this happen? Well, one simple truth, they must not have properly onboarded those vendors if these massive, almost monopoly sized companies are getting this wrong. So many more of you will be dealing with this issue, whether it's in your small sort of freelance business, your mid-size or enterprise level business, this is going to be a challenge for you. So let's go into a little bit of detail here to, to help you out with your vendor onboarding. So what is vendor onboarding? I look at vendor onboarding to ensure that I don't end up in a bad marriage with a vendor that I, I never wanted in the first place because they may have some awful bad traits that I just don't want to be part of. So vendor onboarding is all about understanding who your vendor is and you want to identify all of the issues that this vendor may have at present or in the future before you sign the contract. See, vendor onboarding is a risk mitigation play. We're actively looking to control the level of risk in our vendor base here. And we can't control the vendor base unless we have full visibility into who our vendor is, their credit checks, their cyber vulnerabilities, or their cyber performance, and any other key criteria. So it could be health and safety responses. It could be their view of data protection and the obligations that they have there and how they protect personal data. There's seven key activities that we will undertake for vendor onboarding. One, due diligence questionnaires with the vendor. Two, the use of tech to rate the financial health or stability of the vendor. Three, use of tech to rate the cyber health of the vendor. Four, reviews of all of the data we've captured so far to ensure that this vendor is a good fit for us. Five, risk identification, capture it in the risk register, and then mitigation throughout the full life cycle of this vendor with us. Six, price finalization. So if we're negotiating anything, we probably want to try and you know, capture all of the pricing details and any other contractual issues that come up. And seven can happen at any time really, uh, but typically I would suggest that this one happens before you start sharing information, but some people might not want this one, but it's putting an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement in place with the vendor. And just one bonus tip here is you could actually start really negotiating the contract terms. So have your contract management or legal team start negotiating the contract with this vendor. But you do run the risk that if the vendor checks don't turn out how you want it, you've wasted all of that time reviewing the contract. But the upside of this is that you massively speed up that time to contract by doing these activities at the same time. I want you to think about data now, because what do we do with all of this data that we've captured during this onboarding process? So this is what I like to do with the data that I get in the vendor onboarding stage. I like to use it to segment my vendors. And what do I mean by this? I mean, prioritizing my strategic vendors, which might be based on risk, spend, or importance or criticality of that vendor to my products or services that we're selling on, all the way through to those very transactional tail spend vendors that I don't really need to have so much oversight of, but we need to do something with them. I like to ensure that we've got visibility of like disaster recovery, business continuity, and all the plans around this. So that if one of my critical or strategic vendors goes down, that I know what's going to happen in the minutes, hours, and days after that event to ensure that we don't have a service interruption that's going to wipe us out as well. It's a really good way to safeguard our compliance with our auditors. And this could be external or internal auditors, but largely auditors like to know that you're doing things in a set way, which might, you know, I'll share one experience, SOC 2. The SOC 2 certification uh, auditors that I was dealing with required us to onboard our vendors in a prescribed manner that we had already shared with them. And one of my jobs was to ensure that we could evidence that all of the vendors had been onboarded in the appropriate way. 
And it was super easy to, to show them. I could just go on to the vendor onboarding workflow, go onto all of the archive cars and just show them, hey, we've onboarded all of these vendors in this time period and they're all active and being managed appropriately now. And one last point for you here regarding vendor onboarding. Vendor onboarding can really set the scene for your relationship with your vendors. So if you have a very onerous, a very rigid and frustrating experience for the vendor to come on, on board with you, that's going to upset them. It's going to cause a little bit of friction and tension up front. So when you're designing your vendor onboarding process, you want to keep it as lean as possible. You want to rely on elements such as market IQ here at Gatekeeper that we use to check out the financial health and the cyber health. So you don't have to ask loads of questions about these. The checks are automated. And then for any question you need to ask the vendor, you only want to ask that question if you're going to take the data that you get from that question and do something with it. If you're just asking questions for the sake of it, strip them out of your onboarding process and you're going to give your vendors a far better experience onboarding with you, which is going to set your relationship up far better. Before you go, check out this video, which is all about RAG statuses and how you can use RAG statuses to give full visibility to your business around the performance of your vendors and the vendor contracts. See you soon.